Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test Tube Plus today. I'm Trace, this is episode four of five on psychedelic drugs. It's pretty exciting so far this week. We've talked about the history of these psychedelics. We've talked about why they're being used in the military and how they're being used in the military in our history, as well as what's happening in our brains when we take them. Make sure you check out those episodes and subscribe if you haven't already. Just a reminder, guys, we're talking about pretty heavy stuff, psychedelic drugs today. We're not condoning their use. We're just talking about them scientifically, as rationally as we can. So let's get started. Now that we know about how these drugs got to where we are, it's been 50 years and they're starting to lift the bands on these drugs because scientists have been working for a long time to try and say, no, 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 you can't overdose on these. They're not bad for you inherently. And when they're used safely and correctly, they could actually be a benefit to people. So they've started lifting the bands on the use of psychedelics in scientific research. Congress restricted the use of hallucinogens, like LSD, to scientific research in 1965. Under the Controlled Substances Act of 1970, they halted manufacture and distribution of hallucinogenic substances, like LSD, DMT, psilocybin, mescaline, all the things we've been talking about. They stopped it, and they said these things cannot be used. Psychedelics affect the brain the way that other drugs don't. The first brain scans of LSD are now happening because of the lifting of these old bands. And this year, they did a study with 20 people who they gave very small amounts of LSD, and then they scanned their brains with a functional MRI to see where blood would flow when they were high. It showed that LSD affects parts of the brain in a way that might benefit and treat depression. Think about that, that's huge. That means that all this time we may have had a way to help people with depression that we haven't been working with because it was banned. So in 2008, a study came out called Mystical Type Experiences Associated with Psilocybin Mediate. Basically, it was one of the first studies that they used psychedelic drugs in a scientific capacity. They looked at the long-term effect over 14 months of people who were given psilocybin or magic mushrooms in a scientific way. And they found that this was one of the most meaningful experiences of these people's lives. All they did was tell them to close their eyes and direct their attention inward while in the presence of a therapist. And 14 months later, it was in the top five most meaningful experiences they'd ever had. That's crazy. And this is just one of a bunch of studies that have gotten scientists excited about psychedelics again. In 2012, they did a psilocybin study on the brain where they looked at blood flow patterns and thought, wow, this could really help us understand depression. Also in 2012, they looked at LSD and they found that people with life-threatening illnesses who had been told that they were going to die could overcome their anxiety about death just by taking a little LSD and talking to their therapists. They realized that they could live in the now and they were still alive and this can revolutionize end-of-life care. Think about it, if you're happy that Every day is your last day, sure, but you're living today. In 2013, they had a whole conference in Oakland where 1,600 scientists went to talk about how psychedelics could change the brain, rewire it, or fix addiction. There's a journal, Psychopharmacology, that said that LSD might be able to treat addiction. So what happens is, Psychotics aren't physically addictive, so you can give it to an addict and you don't have to worry about them becoming dependent on it, which could be great. And a tiny dose of LSD given during a therapeutic session in the presence of a therapist can change how addiction is treated. Basically, from what we can tell, it has to do with levels of suggestion. You can talk to your own brain and tell it what you want it to do. And addicts were prompted by these conversations to believe that they could get better and that would get cemented into their subconscious. It was almost like self-inception. Psychedelics opened the mind to the suggestion of a better life and using therapy and psychology along with this open-minded LSD treatment, they could treat these addicted patients. Plus, on top of all of that, LSD and these other drugs, remember serotonin, our old friend that makes us happy? Prozac is a, called an SSRI, or a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. What happens is Prozac stops serotonin from being absorbed back into the brain once its job is done. So it keeps people feeling happy. LSD is like super Prozac. It makes you release more serotonin and more and more, and it makes people feel even happier. And it doesn't last as long, and 
probably wouldn't want to be on LSD all the time, but it'll help us learn about how the brain works. And there's more and more science and medicine happening now, and this only has a lot of benefits if done right. It's kind of funny how we understand what psychedelic drugs can do for these things so quickly. And we've only been studying them for a little while. And these are all pretty bad things. Addiction, death, depression. You know, those are the big, big baddies. In the 50s, we were trying to use this stuff for mind control and like, you know, fighting our enemies. But it turns out it's way better to help people. But just, you know, again, we're not advocating for the use of drugs. We're just saying there's a lot of <laughs> science here that could be done. But if you want to talk about alternatives to some of these psychedelics, you don't need to take LSD to have a hallucinogenic experience. We're going to talk about that tomorrow on Test 2 Plus. Make sure you subscribe so you can get that video number five in our series on psychedelics. Thanks for watching. Tell us about your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll see you there.